Welcome back. The objectives of this video is to define and explore recursive sequences. We will introduce factorial notation and we'll simplify factorial expressions. So what is a recursive sequence? To define a sequence recursively, you need to be given one or more of the first few terms. Then all of the other terms of the sequence are defined using previous terms. So let's take a look at a sample of a recursive sequence. We're asked to write the first five terms of the sequence defined recursively as a sub 1 equals 3, then a sub k equals 2 to the a k minus 1 plus 1, where k is greater than or equal to 2. So our k's start counting at k equals 2, 3, and 4. So a sub 1 is 3, so that's kind of the, that's our previously defined value. So that we've got to start with that. a sub 2 would be 2 a to the k minus 1, so k can be 2, so 2 minus 1 is 1, so, so a sub 1 is 2 a times a sub 1 plus 1, so we end up with 2 times 3 plus 1 equals 7, so a sub 2 is 7. And then we take 7, and now we are going to use that for finding a sub 3. So a sub 3 equals 2 times a to the 3 minus 1, so 2a sub 2 plus 1 equals 2 times 7 plus 1 equals 15. So we're essentially going to put 7 into our, func our function. Really our function is 2 times the previous value plus 1. So 2 times 7 plus 1 is 15, so then we take 15, 2 times 15 plus 1 is 31, we take 31, we put that back in, 2 times 31 plus 1 is 63. We're using the recursion formula over and over again. So here's another sample. Write the first five terms of the sequence defined recursively as a sub 0 equals 1, a sub 1 equals 3, so then a sub 2 is we're going to have to follow this formula. And it looks like a sub 2 is really a sub k minus 2, which is two a's ago, plus a sub k minus 1, which was the previous. What we've got here, if we start at k equals 2, we're asked to find a sub 0 plus a sub 1. So a sub 2 essentially is equal to a sub 0 plus a sub 1. So 1 plus 3 is 4. We continue on. a sub 3 then is going to be a sub 1 plus a sub 2. So a sub 1 is 3, a sub 2 is 4, we get 7. And then a sub 4 is a sub 2 plus a sub 3. So 4 plus 7 is 11. So we keep using the previous to find the next. So our first five terms are 1, 3, 4, 7, and 11. Factorials. If n is a positive integer, then n factorial is defined as n factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. 3 factorial is equal to 1 times 2 times 3. 4 factorial is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. Couple special cases, 0 factorial is just equal to 1, and of course so is 1 factorial. So interestingly enough, 0 factorial and 1 factorial have the same values. So here we've listed what 2 factorial, 3 factorial, and 4 factorial are. Notice here that 3 factorial is equal to 2 factorial times 3, and 4 factorial is equal to 3 factorial times 4. So that would mean n factorial is equal to n minus 1 factorial, so the 2 is just 1 less than the 3, the 3 is 1 less than 4, times whatever value I had for n. If I had 5, then 5 factorial would equal 4 factorial times 5. And a couple order of operations and things that can find, we can find helpful here is 2n factorial is the same thing as 2 times n factorial, so we can double we can, our n factorial. The quantity 2n factorial is equal to 1, 2, 3 times 4 
all the way out to 2n. Let's take a look at another sample. We're asked to write the first five terms of the sequence given by a sub n equals 2 to the n over n factorial. Begin with n equals 0. So I'm going to put n in 0 in for n, and my exponent, and in my denominator, 0 factorial is not 0, it's 1, so I get 1 over 1 is 1. And I keep repeating the process. For n equals 1, 2 to the first, all over 1 factorial, 2 to the second, over 2 factorial, 2 to the third, and so forth, we get our values 2 4 thirds, and 2 thirds. In this sample, we want to simplify some factorial expressions, and we will be able to use the information that we saw earlier in our notes. We're going to simplify 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 6 factorial. And yes, we could multiply everything out and simplify our, our fractions that way. That's going to work. But let's use the information that we have. We've got this 6 factorial in the denominator. 8 factorial is clearly bigger than that. And in fact, 8 factorial includes 6 factorial. So those are going to simplify in some way. Well, 6 factorial times 7 times 8 is the same thing as 8 factorial. Those numerators are equivalent. So our 6 factorials cancel, simplify. We're left with 8 times 7 over 2 factorial, which is just 2. And we get 56 over 2 or 28 over 1. In sample B, we want to simplify n factorial over n minus 1 factorial. Let's take a look at that again. All the way up here, I had n factorial and n minus 1 factorial. And we said n factorial was the equivalent of n minus 1 factorial times n. That is going to be helpful in this problem. n factorial is the same as n minus 1 factorial times n. Well, that means our n minus 1 factorials can simplify, and we're simply left with n over 1. And in this last sample, sample 6, we want to simplify the factorial expression 4n factorial times n plus 1 factorial all over 3 factorial n factorial. Well, on the left-hand side here, we could take our 4 factorial. We know that's equal to 3 factorial times 4. But what about this n plus 1 factorial? I'm not sure what we can do with that. Let's think about that n plus 1 factorial, I'm telling you, is equal to n factorial times n plus 1. Let's say if our n is 5, then n plus 1 would be 6. According to this, 6 factorial would have to equal 5 factorial times 6. And it does. We know that's the case, isn't it? We saw that earlier. Therefore, n plus 1 factorial does indeed, and this will work every time, equals n factorial times n plus 1. I'm not sure that's a great algebraic proof there and rock solid, but uh, I can guarantee you that that is the case. So I'm going to take n plus 1 factorial, and I'm going to rewrite it as n factorial times n plus 1. So now I have 3 factorial times 4 times n factorial times n plus 1. All right, I rewrote n plus 1 factorials, n factorial times n plus 1. My denominator stays the same, 3 factorial over n factorial. My 3 factorials simplify, my n factorials simplify, and I'm left in my numerator with 4 times n plus 1. So I have simplified that factorial expression. And we'll get some more practice with factorials and recursives when I see you in class.